Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are grateful uh, to God for this opportunity to have you watch our program. We are so pleased and so happy to have you on the program today. Our main goal is that we all get into maturity in Christ. Today we are on the Psalter looking at Psalm 37. An experienced man of God, David, is telling us the goodness of uh, safeguarding or keeping your righteousness before God. I hope God, through his word, will bless you today. Keep watching. Be blessed. The title of the message today is When You Feel Like Giving Up. It's taken from the Psalter, Psalm 37. Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The psalm, actually, it seems David wrote it at a later age in his life. If you read verse 25, it says, I was young and now I'm old. That is an indicator that this psalm is an, it's one that he recorded when he was an old person. So this means he had to he was actually sharing his experience what he has observed over the years as a from the young life as a shepherd to being a king so he has observed all these experiences and now he knows what is good and what is not wrong what is what is good and what is not right he has seen the works of god god giving him victory over soul who wanted to kill him victory over all the challenges he has faced uh, he had faced in life so he wrote this psalm as someone who is giving a words of advice to a righteous person that this is what happens and this is how the Lord deals with Satan issues. If we go deeper into the psalm, David is encouraging the righteous person to put his trust in the Lord, not to give up regardless of whatever is happening around him, and never to draw towards wickedness or to follow the ways of unrighteousness. He claims to tell that righteousness has more value than wickedness. Regardless of what you see the unrighteous do or the wicked do, but he wants to show that righteousness has value. He lists the different things we are going to talk about. So he's encouraging the righteous person not to lose the trust in God because trust in God gives success. Now, in the time we live in, we have challenges. As the righteous people, sometimes we see the people who are wicked succeeding in life. Maybe they are into business or they are into whatever politics or whatever, whatever you can regard as a sign of success. We see them succeeding, but we never know what they do behind the closed doors. We never know of the, corruptions that they engage, the, the corruption they engage into to make it in life. So sometimes we may even be aware of how they get the money or how they succeed. And we feel, you know what I'm doing as a Christian? It is delaying me. It's making me a person who is a failure. I want to succeed. And you think of joining the wicked people. So today the Bible is encouraging us not to give up, but to continue in our righteousness because, because there are benefits of doing that. So I've split the psalm into three, but I will start with the wicked. What the wicked do and what happens to them. If we read the Bible, it tells us not to fret, not to be constantly anxious of these people who are wicked. Sometimes we always want, like I've said, we want these good things. We want to own what they have. Now, the question is, what is this thing that actually draws us or wants us to join the people who are wicked? 
if you read the same psalm, verse 16 to 17, you get that there is world in these people. The other thing you also get that there is power in the people who are wicked. And in verse 7, you get that the wicked prosper in their way. So if you see the prosperity that is there in the wicked people, if you see the power that is there, if you see the wealth that is there, you are attracted as a person and you wish to be like them. That's the first thing that we note from the wicked as the Bible records here. Now, we also see about the heart, or we learn of the heart of the wicked people. When the wicked people see the righteous, verse 32, it says, they desire to kill the righteous. It says, these people, actually, the wicked, have actually devised strategies, secret strategies to harm the righteous. They hate the righteous people gnashing their teeth when they see them. That is the level of hate that they have for the righteous. Verse 12 reveals their objective. It says, The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The Lord just sees what they are doing. Ne never mind uh, of the courage or the discouragement or the strategies that they have done or have prepared before you just to entice you or to make you fall. Know this, God sees all that. The Bible has said they plot against you. They devise strategies against you. The righteous. When we talk about the righteous people, we're a person or a righteous person, we're talking about, if I can just be uh, simple, we're talking of a pure Christian or a Christian, someone who has accepted Christ. But these are people of integrity, people who fear God, who follows the direction of the Holy Spirit. These are people who who are trustworthy, people of integrity, who love the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the people that are attacked by the wicked people. The other thing that the wicked people do, they have not only devised the strategies to destroy you as a righteous person, but they have even set their weapons ready to destroy you. The Bible says, if you read verse, verse 14, the wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and the needy. The wicked person, these people who we see as wealthy, the people that we see as they prosper, or the people that we see to have power, the people who are unrighteous, the wicked, I want to emphasize this that it's not everyone who is powerful, who is wealthy, or who is uh, also has power and, and, and prospers in life, who is wicked. Some of them are righteous. But I'm talking about the one who is wicked, who does not even care about the Lord Jesus Christ. These people, on top of devising the strategies, they have the weapons ready. In other words, they have put everything thing in place just to attack you as a Christian. They just want to attack, to destroy you in whatever way they do it. Now, the Bible says, as we read, the Lord just laughs at them, for he knows their day is coming. The question is, when is that day? The day of the Lord is when the evildoers will be completely destroyed and their offsprings will perish. These are people who just do things. What is, anyhow, what is of importance to them is that they achieve or they get what they want. They can step on people's uh, head just to get what they want, and they can do anything for success, for wealth, and for power, the wicked. So 
David is warning us not to be enticed to these people. He is just looking at how they are. He is reflecting on their life. All the things he himself, as a righteous person, he ex experienced the strategies that, including Saul, has devised against him just to kill him. He has also observed the weapons that they put just to make sure that when we see David, we just shoot. Because he was a righteous man. Now, the other thing we see in verse 21 is that the, 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 these wicked people, they borrow and they never repay. They just borrow and they never repay. These are wicked people. Now, Paul, David is writing to us as the righteous person to be encouraged, for well, this is visible before the eyes of the Lord. That's why in verse 2, he views them as grass. Like grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. The person who is speaking, as I said earlier, is an old person. He has experienced a lot of things in life and he has seen the wicked get to nothing. He has seen their lives come to a halt and to an end. He even says, sooner they will soon wither. So it's not something that is going to take a lot of time, but it is something that will just happen very soon. They will lose they are green, they are whatever it is if we talk of grass. If grass is withered, it is either because of the sun, there's too much sunshine, uh, or there's drought. There's nothing that they have. But what is uh, interesting is that for a Christian, even in drought, Psalms 1 verse 3, it says that those who trust in the Lord will be like a tree planted by the water. One that draws water from the streams, even in dry season, its leaves will be green. Those are the people that put their trust in the Lord, but not the wicked, because the wicked put their trust in their assets and in their wealth. Now, what does the righteous person have to do? Now, if we talk about the righteous person, is those that are people, those are people of integrity and people with a godly character. The Bible here, or David, is encouraging the righteous people to trust in God and put their trust in God and do good, regardless of the strategies that are there. By so doing, they will dwell in the land and enjoy a safe pasture. Now, we know that David had been a shepherd at some point in time. So he knows that there are uh, pastures that are not really safe, but there are those that are safe. Are, those are safe. Now, these are pastures that are good, that the Lord prepares for his own. In Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 14, it says, I will turn them in good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land and feed in a rich pasture land in the mountain of Israel. That is the NIV. God has something good, a protected pasture, where there is food that is protected for his own, for the people that trust in him, that put their trust in him. Listen, my brethren, there is, a, there is value and there is a benefit in trusting God. You will have good, safe pasture. The, 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 the righteous person must take Pleasure in God. Enjoy and be pleased in God. Enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Now, he will give you pleasure and petitions, they will be answered. Your petitions of the heart. 
This is David talking. He has an experience that this God he has seen all his life has protected him from the devices of the wicked. And he is the same God that has made, met, I'm sorry, met the desires of his heart. He's feeling good. Now, Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew chapter 6, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness on all these things will be given to you as well. Now, I must say this, when we're talking about the desires of the heart, it might not be, it's not something that is uh, within you out of greed, something that is there as a desire out of greed. But God will supply what you need, exactly what you need. He will give you what you need. If you read the same chapter, Psalms 37, verse 25, it attests, David says that he, he, he was young and old, he has never seen the children of the righteous uh, to be begging. People who fear God and put their trust in God. I mean, just knowing that God will provide for you if you just keep your life pure live a life of integrity a life that fears god just be content and satisfied with what you have because god gives you exactly what you need now uh, verse 5 to the righteous it says draw your ways to the lord or commit your ways to the lord now, we're talking about putting your trust in him. Now, when we say commit your ways to the Lord, we're saying if you commit to something, you bind whatever you're doing to it. You, 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 you agree to do as it says. Now, if we commit to the Lord, we commit our ways to God's standard. In other ways, we commit that our way of life will abide by the guidance of the Word of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You are saying, God, be in authority and direct my life. Now, if you roll your way, whatever you do, your life is under the subjection of the God of God. I'm sorry, you agree, you have agreed to abide by the rules of the Lord. Now, we should truly love God. Now, this now brings to two acts. There are some results of this. Your righteousness, I like this one, your righteousness will shine and everyone will see it. Now, in the NIV, it likens this to, the, to, to dawn. If you look at dawn, the sign is bright. Actually, sometimes you can't even look at the sunshine or towards that direction because it's too bright. That is the righteousness of the people that trust God and that has put their, 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 their ways into the Lord. They've rolled it unto the, to the Lord. They have committed. It means, in other words, your life is so clear. Those are people who trust the, the, our Lord. You see, people of integrity or people that have put their trust in God, there is nothing to question. Their life is just clear before the people. Even if they, they can, people can say lies like they devise the strategies as we have read on the wicked, people will say, no, that one cannot do it. Your life is pure because you fear God. Now, it further says the vindication or the judgment is like their, their, their vindication or their judgment is like the new day. Everyone will see and understand that these people are righteous. They were not wrong, but were pursuing righteousness. Because it happens sometimes as you pursue righteousness, the wicked. They see you as the person who is wrong. Because they are wicked, they can even take you to court or bring you before judgment. If you are at work, they can bring you before the disciplinary committee. And the, 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 the judgment that the Bible says, it will show that, no, this guy, will, if the judgment is not biased and is, is pure, it will be like, Clear, it will be clear that this guy didn't do this thing. Whatever he, he did, it was out of righteousness and is for the good of the company. So keep your tr righteousness. Trust God. David is speaking from experience. 
Now he's saying, rest in God and wait patiently for him. Patience is one of the things that is difficult for some of us. But if you put your trust and just wait for the Lord, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, maybe even a year, just wait, even years, waiting for the Lord. Wait patiently for the Lord. And you have put your trust in the Lord. Now, even if the wicked have devised the strategies, sometimes you have even heard of the strategies. Now, these schemes, if you hear of them, you might be tempted to anger. But on the other hand, as he has warned at the beginning that we shouldn't be people who want to be like the wicked and be and envy their way of life and want to be like them, because maybe because of the wealth that you see in their life and the power that they have, we are actually sometimes tempted to, we, to feel like being part of their life or to be like them. This may lead us into temptation, into be tempted of doing things that are against God. Now, uh, the writer here says, now, as a, as a Christian, you need to refrain from this, uh, from this thing. Stop doing it. Sometimes you can even know what the wicked are doing and they're successful and it makes you angry and it makes you angry. You, 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 you talk, the Bible talks here of anger and wrath. Now, David uh, advises that you should just seize that, seize the anger and abandon it. Just leave the wrath. For God is going to deal with the situation. So don't be tempted to be like the wicked. I know we live in a world where we wish to have these things. And you might be derailed from the purpose the Lord has for you. We should embrace God's leadership. And now we also, let, we, we also read this. that The evildoers will be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord will inherit the earth. You know, when I read this, I read it several times. What does God mean when he says we shall inherit the land? Yeah, this is one of the things that is very difficult because uh, maybe Christianity has been presented in a way that we will enjoy the life uh, in the, uh, when we die and we get to heaven. But I can give you an illustration. If you talk of the children of Israel, who were God's loved nation, who were righteous before him, he gave them the land of Canaan. They, get, they got the land. They were still on this earth. Now, as the righteous people, verse 27 uh, exhorts us or encourages us to depart from evil, but do good. You see, we are guaranteed not only of the land, but we are also guaranteed of eternity. Christians are expected, if we read uh, Psalms 37 verse 21, because we are talking of the righteous people. We said the people who are wicked, they borrow and they never bring back. But verse 21, I'll read 21 and 27. It reads, the wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. It is the character of a Christian to be generous. People who are righteous are expected to be generous. You cannot separate ministry from generosity. You cannot separate Christianity from generosity. As Christians, we are expected to give. It is a character of a righteous life. You have to give to the poor and to people who are in need. You have to give as a Christian. We are expected to do exactly that. Now, this has a reward for the people who love God. Now, verse 30 further states this for the righteous. Their mouth utters wisdom. This is one of the things that is very important. To us as Christians, our mouths should utter wisdom. As a Christian, you are just not supposed to speak anyhow and speak words that destroy people. 
Listen, we are people who have been saved and have received the Holy Spirit and is the one who tells us to do what and to do what. And we are expected to speak words that advise us, words of wisdom, not words that destroy people, but words of hope, words that encourage people, words that bring a hope and a future for people. The other part that I want us to talk about is the part of God or God's part. Now, the people who do evil will be destroyed, whilst those who fear God or who remain righteous will, will inherit the earth. They will inherit the earth. The righteous will enjoy peace. Keep trust in God. In your situation, he will give you victory. Those who are wicked will soon diminish. But we who are righteous, people who have integrity, we will inherit peace and prosperity. God will uphold those who fear him, but break the power of the wicked. If we read Exodus 14, verse 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. In Siswati it says in Zulu, because I remember it in Zulu, my mom used to read it in Zulu. It used to say, No tool and in Jehovah, we are only Lueda. Our battles, let them be fought by the Lord. Let the Lord fight our battles. Just give it to him. Put your trust in him and he will deal with that particular situation. I know it is difficult sometimes, but it is only if you put your trust in the Lord. David exhorts us to put our trust in the Lord. And he is assuring us that God sees all that the wicked are doing to you and their schemes against your life. And he will bring it to a stop and you will prosper in life and you will have eternal life. And this will also cascade to your generation. The blameless, which is the righteous, spend, spend their day under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. Their inheritance will endure forever. People, let's maintain our righteousness. Our righteousness, I'm sorry. There is eternity. Our, our, our inheritance will be forever. You know what? We don't only live on this earth, but there is a life after death. It will be forever. On this earth, it will cascade to our generations. Now, this is one of the verses that we have read so many times. If we are the people who fear God, people of righteousness, people of integrity, the Bible says uh, in verse 20, 22, the Lord will order our footsteps. This is David writing. He knows that the Lord orders the footsteps of the righteous. As a righteous person, he has experienced God leading him. He knows that God actually directs the footsteps of a righteous person. As you step, as a righteous person, God orders the step. What an experience. What an experience. What an experience. Have your steps ordered by the Lord. Now, David attests that he has never, never seen the righteous forsaken. This is a personal experience. He's now talking to us. This is what I know. God never uh, leaves those who fear him. The righteous, God takes care of them. He never forsakes them. He never leaves them on their own. He never lakes them, uh, makes them look for food where there is no food. He never brings them to hunger. He never complicates their life. He never allows the enemy to destroy them. God protects the righteous. We are protected. Let us keep the life of faith in the Lord. Well, we have come to the end of our program today. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. I wish we had more time to discuss more things that the Lord has for the righteous people. But I believe what you have is just enough to keep you going in the faith in Christ. 
Thank you for watching the program. If you have concern on, concerns or you want to contact us, please feel free to send a, a WhatsApp or text message to the number that we sent. The program can also be watched on YouTube where you can get it uh, anytime you want it at night, anytime. I believe God is going to bless you. Have a wonderful time and let's keep our trust in God and maintain our, our righteousness. God loves you and we love you. Goodbye.